Our speaker today is Jamie Scott from University of Florida, who will tell us about applications of surgery to a generalized Brudiac conjecture. Uh, before you start, Jamie, uh, everybody remember, if you've got a question, hop in, or there'll be plenty of time at the end. Yeah, right. I certainly don't mind getting interrupted for a question or something like that, if you have one. Um, Take it away. All right, um, so title's already been read. Um, basically, I'm gonna go over the very basic things that we all already know about sectional category. Um, just a quick reminder, uh, then I will jump into uh, what is uh, Rudiak's conjecture, some basic surgery theory, um, and uh, we'll talk about the results used in a recent paper uh, that did uh, Rudiak's conjecture for normal maps satisfying certain assumptions for LS category. And from there, we will generalize this to TC. And, okay. So um, sectional category, as we all know, uh, given a vibration from E to B, uh, we will, the sectional category of P is defined to be the smallest integer K, such that there's an open covering of the base B by K plus one open sets, uh, each of which admitting a section of P. And um, I'm going by reduced sectional category here. So I used K when I had K plus one open sets. Some people use K for K open sets. Um, that, that would be unreduced. And so two um, very common examples of this are uh, LS category um, or Erlus Direction Ironman category. And that is the uh, sectional category of the base path space vibration. Um, and uh, the usual definition for LS category is that you have uh, you know, uh, that the inclusion maps of the cover are no homotopic, and that's the same as having a section of this, uh, of this base path space vibration. And then we have topological complexity, where you take the full path space vibration, um, and that goes to the product space X cross X, and basically you just map paths to their endpoints. And um, the sections of this have a special name, they're called motion planners, and if you have a collection of such sections, we call this a motion planning algorithm. Um, one of the important tools that we'll use are fiberwise joins. Um, so if you have a collection of vibrations, PI from XI to Y, then we define the fiberwise join of these uh, vibrations. Uh, and it's called this because the ending definition, the fiber will be the join of the fiber. So fiberwise join. Um, anyways, first we need to define the domain, uh, which we denote by x1, and then we'll start with the y all the way up to xk. And this will actually be a subspace of the full join of from x1 to xk. Um, and so if we have a sum ti xi, we'll say that this is in the, uh, the fiberwise join of spaces um, when pi equals xi, um, pi of xi equals pj of xj whenever um, ti and tj are both non-zero. Um, and so then we define a fiberwise join of maps to be a map from that space to the codomain Y, um, such that a sum TI XI maps to PI of XI for any I such that TI is not zero. And so that domain is essentially defined to be the biggest domain on which this map is well-defined. Um, okay, and we have special notation when all of our Ps are the same. And so it's that little asterisk with a superscript of K denoting the number of joins, the fiberwise joins, and the subscript of Y denoting the base space. And we put the spaces in there if, uh, for the domain with that notation. And then for the, vibra the resulting vibration, we put the vibration in that notation um, right here. Um, and then a theorem by Schwartz that says 66. That's the AMS translation series uh, reference, but it's actually like 58, I believe. Um, if you have a vibration whose base is normal and Hausdorff, then the sectional category of a vibration is less than or equal to K, if and only if the K plus one self fiberwise joint of P emits a section. Um, and so here we have a special case. These are called Vinia vibrations. And this is for when we're looking at the based path space vibration. Again, this is the map that maps a based path to its endpoint, its non-fixed endpoint. Um, and so the kth guinea space 
is the K plus one fiber wise join of the uh, of the base path space. And then the K thinia vibration is the K plus one fiber wise join of the base path space vibration. And then of course, there's a theorem from Ganea that is essentially the theorem from Schwartz in this case, which is that if X is a normal Hausdorff space, then the category of X is less than or equal to K, if and only if the K thinia vibration emits a section. And there we go. So um, what is Rudy X conjecture at this point? Well, Rudy X conjecture is that if we have a degree one map between closed manifolds, then the category of M is at least as big as the category of N. Um, this is motivated from uh, the fact that category has, uh, it's a slower bound for the number of critical points from a manifold to the real numbers. Um, so of, of a smooth map. Um, and so he had a similar conjecture with the critical points, and this is motivated from that. Um, an important example, though, is the case of two orientable manifolds, M and N. And we look at the collapsing map of the connected sum onto one of the two sum ends. Um, and this defines a degree one map, of course. And it turns out that Radiac's conjecture is true in this case. Um, the category of M connected sum M is the max of the individual categories. And we'll actually be using this theorem uh, later in the talk. Well, it's used for the LS category version of the result I'll be presenting today. And this is a theorem by Dronishnikov and myself. Um, and it states that if uh, it's especially, it solves a special case of Rudiak conjecture. And so if we assume that our map is normal and of degree one, between, of course, closed smooth manifolds. And we assume that N is R minus one connected for some R at least one, so at least path connected N. Um, if N satisfies the inequality that the dimension is less than or equal to two times R times the category minus three, then cat of M is at least as big as cat of N. This is a, um, th this is a generalization of a theorem Rudiak proved actually uh, in his category weight paper. And that is that uh, for, for Dr. Rudiak, his result assumed that the manifold manifolds were stably parallelizable um, and got this essentially the same result. He also assumed that, the, uh, that this three was a, a four. Um, so we, we improved that bound by one, made it one higher. Um, and uh, for stably parallelizable manifolds, the degree, uh, degree one map, smooth map is already going to be normal. So that's why this is a generalization of that theorem. And just as a reminder, what is a normal map? Uh, this is a condition we need for, uh, to do surgery on the uh, kernels. Um, but basically, if you have a degree one map between smooth closed manifolds, it's called normal if given a vector bundle mu over the codomain N, um, then the tangent bundle of M plus the pullback of mu by F is a stably trivial bundle. So let's get into a little bit of basic surgery here. Um, so if we, uh, we want to cancel essentially elements and homotopy groups, so we're taking surgery to do so, and this will give us embeddings of spheres. Um, and so if we take some S embedded in M and we have, say that's a K sphere, if we say that we want to take a trivial tubular neighborhood of that S. So this will be N and that'll be uh, homeomorphic to S to the K times an N minus K disc. Um, and this is, we can also think of this as being contained in the boundary of a K plus one disc cross an N minus K disc. And so what we do is we take out the interior of N, which will be the interior of that N minus K disc in the product. Um, and then we union in the interior of the, the K plus one disc product, the boundary of the other disc. And so that's gonna be, uh, we're essentially hollowing out one of the spheres and filling in the other one, but we do that in the product. Uh, and that we say that this M prime here is attained from M by a K surgery. So K is the dimension of the sphere that we embedded uh, along that sphere. And we also define what's called the trace of this surgery. So the, this is going to be the bordism between M and M prime 
given by taking a product of M with the unit interval. And then at the, uh, at the one endpoint, we glue in the uh, K plus one disk in that hollow area. Um, and um, we can, if we have, if we do two surgeries, for instance, so we have a bordism from M to M prime and a bordism W prime from M prime to M prime prime. Um, then we can define a new bordism, W prime prime, uh, from M to M prime prime. I'm sorry for all the primes. Um, and we identify essentially the end point of the first bordism to the beginning point of the second bordism. And we can define a new bordism in this way. And we call this bordism the trace of that chain of surgeries. And of course, we can inductively define this for any you know, chain of surgeries we want. One important fact we get about um, what bordisms are of the homotopy equivalents is actually we can think about it as um, gluing cells of dimension one more than the uh, surgery that you uh, performed. So if we have a, a train of surgeries in dimensions n sub one minus one all the way up to n sub k minus one, uh, yeah, then we can think about that as gluing cells, so like a n an n one disk all the way up to an NK disk. And so this, what this will do is this will allow us to um, think about extending a map from M to say W as using obstruction theory. Um, and so we'll actually use that later on. So let me give some examples of surgery. So first I'm going to give an example of a, uh, of a zero surgery. So let me change my color real quick. So we have if we take the M equal and one a two sphere. So we have something like this. Excuse me if my scrolling is not so great. And then we want to um, we want to embed a uh, zero sphere, which is just two points, right? So we'll do we'll do the poles like that. And we want to take a, uh, a tubular neighborhood of this. So let me start a, uh, another drawing here. Um, if we don't look at the tubular neighborhood. We're gonna get something like, I'm gonna draw that a little smaller, something like this. So we have essentially a sphere with the caps removed. And then we add in that tubular neighborhood that we just took. And uh, like that. And then we have, of course, have our S1 still embedded, I mean, our S0 still embedded. And I think it's, it should. So it kind of looks like that. And then, of course, um, this is N equals S0 cross A2 desk, right? So two copies of the disk are embedded in my sphere. And I want to remove all of that um, before I get to M prime. So first of all, we'll have M set minus the interior of N. So I'll draw that first. And something like this. And so, excuse me again for the bad drawing. So uh, that should be a dotted line right there. Don't look, what are you? Okay, I, I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. Um, and then we want to union in what happens on the, uh, by filling in the other disk. So this is gonna be a union of, so I cross S1. And so we had our S0 at the top and the bottom here. So we want our S1 to attach like this. And then we can do that here too. And then we do that with a product of S1. So we go all the way around like that. And what do you know? We have a torus. Um, so this is the same as 
just our usual torus right here. Okay. And so I'm also going to give you an example of a one surgery. And so in this case, I'm going to make my M equal to the uh, torus. And so that is, it looks something like this. Maybe I'll draw it a little bigger than the last one. And I want an embedding of, so I'm doing a one surgery. So I want an embedding of a circle, right? So we have S1, including into this, something like that. And then from here, we want to actually take a uh, tubular neighborhood. And I guess I'll just draw it on there. So N equals S1. And so in this case, the dimension is two. So I'm gonna do two minus the dimension of the sphere. So one, so we're gonna do that with a one interval or a, a one disc. And um, we'll include that into there. So that essentially gives me two more, two more rings. that. And of course, I have to draw along there. And so I got that nice little sort of open cylinder there. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut that out. So from here, we have, say, we look at m minus the interior of n. And that will give us, um, so like that. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue in. We're gonna glue in, so we, we removed um, S1 cross an interval. So we're gonna fill in the S1 with a two disc on the endpoints of that interval. And so the endpoints of that interval are these caps right here. And so we just fill this in. But what is this? This is a, this is a sphere, right? So um, this is the same as a two sphere. Okay. And so, Moving on from some examples, we have the main theorem of surgery. And so what this says is that given any group pi, we get a four periodic sequence of abelian groups. These are called L groups or wall groups. Um, and we denoted L sub n of pi, such that if the dimension n is greater than or equal to five and you take a degree one normal map f between closed manifolds, then in the nth L group of the fundamental group, there is an, uh, an element dependent upon F. We call that, theta, we denote that by theta of F and we call it the surgery obstruction. And so what this surgery obstruction does is if the surgery obstruction is trivial, this happens exactly when F is normally bordered by means of a sequence of surgeries in dimensions less than or equal to the dimension of M over two to a simple homotopy equivalence. So basically what we're gonna do this to do, uh, use this to do is take our map, our degree one normal map F, and we want to kill the homotopy groups up to the middle dimension. I mean, the, the kernels of the homotopy, of the induced maps on the homotopy groups up to the middle dimension. And this will give us a bordism to a homotopy equivalent manifold, a manifold that's homotopy equivalent to our codomain. And then the map F will extend here. And so that's, that's what we're gonna use this for. And so what, what do we need from here for our LS category result? Um, well, if you take a normal map of degree one between closed manifolds and you take the, the map in the opposite orientation, so just taking the uh, manifolds in the opposite orientations, if you take the surgery obstruction of the connected sum of these two maps, this is zero. Whenever that connected sum is well-defined, uh, being a caveat right there. And um, the lemma immediately under it is telling us what we can do to get this to be well-defined, essentially. Um, and so that is that there is, if you have a degree one map, of course, then there is a new map G from a new manifold M prime to N that is bijective on the inverse image of some ball. And so this tells us that we can do connected sums in a well-defined manner. But moreover, what this does is it doesn't change the category. 
And the reason being is because this M right here is actually going to be, e this is M prime is gonna be equal to M. And then we take connected sums of some K number of copies of, uh, of N minus one spheres cross circles. And what this does is it allows us to take pairs of points with opposite orientations and get rid of them. Um, so when we have to real map, we'll have a regular value in the codomain somewhere. We'll take its inverse image and then we'll take off pairs of points that cancel each other out. And then we're left with one point after we blew enough copies in there. And so this, this allows us to take connected sums in the LS category case. And so then we can now look at our uh, main lemma. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna assume there's no surgery obstructions. And so if we look back here, we can just get rid of surgery obstructions by taking connected sums. Since we know the category of a connected sum, we know that the category here um, of this M prime is the same as the category of M. And when we take the category of M connected sum itself, it's going to be the category of M as well. So that will get rid of our surgery obstruction. So all we have to do is prove that if we don't have a surgery obstruction, it works. And so this is here, this here is our main lemma. Um, so if F has no surgery obstructions and N satisfies that same inequality from before, that is that five is less than or equal to dimension of N, this is the requirement to do surgery. And then dimension of N is less than or equal to two times R into the category of N minus three, where again, R is from N being R minus one connected. Then we can conclude that the category of M must be at least as big as the category of N. Okay. And so, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to, I think on the next slide, yeah. In the case R equals one. Um, so if we take the R out of this inequality to make it a little less confusing, uh, it reduces to the, if the dimension of N is less than or equal to twice the category minus three, then we can conclude that the category of M is at least as big as the category of M. Okay. And we're actually going to give a sketch of the proof here. So, we're gonna, you know, we wanna prove that category of M is at least as big as category of N. So let's suppose that that doesn't happen as we do. Um, and we will say that category of M is strictly less than category of N and we will set the category of M equal to a specific Q. From here, we take a lift from M to the uh, Qth Ganea space of N. And we do that by uh, the fact that M has category Q. So that means this, there's a section right here of the Qth Ganea vibration. And then we take the lift of the map F between the Ganea spaces or, or the, yeah. And so that'll give us the, the lambda there. And so our next step is that we want to kill the, the, the kernels of our homotope, of, of the induced map on the homotopy groups. And this will give us a bordism W from some map F to some homotopy equivalents F prime. And so this will allow us to go backwards taking a homotopy inverse when we get there, right? Um, and so this gives us, uh, well, before we do that, we want to be able to extend our lambda because we need to have the lambda define on M prime for that to work. So we need to extend it. And so what we do is we use that proposition from before to write W as M with attaching some specific cells and we have a bound on their dimension. So those cells have dimension um, that their dimension minus one is less than or equal to the uh, half the dimension of M. Okay. And so this, this allows us again to use um, obstruction theory um, to extend lambda to a map L from W to the Qth Ganea space of N. And um, the reason we can use obstruction theory here is that the inequality that we assumed on N a few slides before, so I guess I'll go back. Whoops, a little too far. Um, that inequality right there is tells us something about the connectivity of the fibers of the Qth Ganea space of N. And so that tells us what bound is, it was the obstruction theory right here that told us what our bound had to be. Um, okay. And so now that we have this extension, um, we can just sort of take the homotopy inverse of F prime to get to W and then L to get to the Qth Ganea space. And now we have a homotopy section, but uh, the Qth Ganea vibration is a vibration. So that's 
might as well have a, a section, right? And um, so that's a contradiction because we assumed that um, the category of n was at least, it was greater, strictly greater than q. So this, this map can't have a section. So uh, therefore our, you know, our assumption was wrong and our result follows. <clears throat> okay, uh, I guess there is a good spot to ask if there are, are any questions before I sort of move on to some more general stuff. All right. Um, so the, the thing about this proof is it didn't require really anything specific to LS category over any other type of sectional category, right? Um, you can replace the Qth Ganea spaces with just fiberwise joins of, ma of maps and stuff, right? And um, the obstruction theory wasn't specific to category, nor was the surgery theory. So same proof, we get a more general lemma. And so what this says is that if we have a commutative diagram whose legs are vibrations and whose base map is that normal map of degree one between smooth closed manifolds, and we suppose that this map F lifts to a map um, F bar between the uh, total spaces of the vibrations. Um, so long as we assume that, then we can get the theorem from before. The only difference here is that we assume that the fibers are two mi n mi r minus two connected. Instead of assuming n is r minus one connected, we assume the fibers are minus two connected. And um, uh, this applies to the result from before because in the case of LS category, we had the loop space of N. So that was our FN in the case of LS category. And this is R minus two connected when N is R minus one connected, right? If and only if actually. And so this is the same fiber that's used for topological complexity. And um, for higher topological complexity, we get something similar with like a K minus one fold product there. Um, so we, we can talk about the connectivity of N in the case of higher topological complexity. Um, but we still have, if F has no surgery obstructions, satisfies that same inequality from before, except we have sectional category of the right-hand vibration, then we can conclude that the left-hand vibration has at least the sectional category of the right-hand vibration. Okay, let's move on. So the thing is we, don't really know what happens when we take connected sums in topological complexity. Um, there are some uh, some bounds. Uh, I've not seen any counter examples that it's the maximum of the two, but um, I've also not seen any proofs anywhere. So we can't do the same thing we did for a less category. Um, and so what this means is that we need to have an extra simplifying assumption, at least at this point. Um, and uh, that's gonna be simply connected. Our codomain is simply connected and simply connected surgery is a lot easier. Um, in particular, we, we know what these, uh, we have explicit L groups. Um, so the 4 kth L group, this is actually the hardest of the four to work with, is, um, is actually just Z. And the surgery obstruction of F is uh, one eighth the signature of F, which is the, the signature of the intersection form of F in Z coefficients. The odd L groups are all zero, so that's that's nice, but I guess there is a slight problem. We'll be able to get around it though, that um, if you do TC, we're always gonna have an even dimension in our base because we're looking at um, we're looking at uh, X cross X, right? So, um, but there's a product formula, so we, we can get around that. Um, and then we have that our 4K plus two dimensional L groups, those are Z mod two, and the surgery obstruction of a given F is um, the Kervar invariant of F. And this is defined to be the ARF invariant of the uh, intersection form of F and Z2 coefficients. Okay. And like I said, there's a product formula. Um, so if I have two maps, F1 and F2, both normal maps of degree one between smooth closed manifolds, and we assume that the codomains are simply connected. So we have to break this up into two cases. Um, and that is if the dimension is zero mod four or the dimension of the product is two mod four. If it's anything else, of course, the surgery obstruction is trivial because odd surgery obstructions are trivial in the simply connected case. Um, so in the zero mod four, we get that the surgery obstruction of the product is equal to the um, signature of, the, of N1 times 
uh, the signature of, uh, or not the signature, the surgery obstruction of F2, plus the signature of N2 times the surgery obstruction of F1, plus eight times both of the surgery obstructions. And if the dimension of M1 and M2 is two, is congruent to two mod four, then we have that the, uh, the theta of the product is equal to, so this is uh, the Euler characteristic mod two, of N1 uh, times the surgery obstruction of F2. And again, the Euler characteristic mod two of N2 times uh, the surgery obstruction of F1. Okay. And uh, you, you kind of have to interpret this in you know, some sort of uh, special way. Um, so uh, the signature of a manifold I of M is going to be the signature of a normal map of degree one of the form. Uh, from M to S to the N. And uh, the dimension of uh, MI is odd, but the dimension of the other two, uh, of, of the product is even. What happens here is um, we think about this theta of F as being, um, theta of F2 and F1 as being zero sitting inside of the other surgery obstruction group. And so these are, these, these terms are zero here, right? Those are all zeros. Um, and so if either manifold has odd dimension, then this product formula will tell us that, um, that the surgery obstruction of, of, the, of the map is odd. I mean, it's, it's zero. Um, okay. And then we have one more case we, that we're gonna consider is if the dimension of the MIs are two mod four, but the dimension of the product is, is, is zero mod four. Um, and we also get zero in this case. Um, and what happens is uh, we're, we're sort of mapping from Z2 to Z. So what happens is these end up being zero because of that. Um, because you can't map torsion non-trivially to non-torsion, right? Um, so, you know, we have a product formula. There, there's a few caveats that, uh, you know, this comes from Browder. He doesn't go into too much detail explaining the caveats, but uh, they are there. Uh, and so a corollary of this formula is if you have a normal map of degree one and the codomain is simply connected and the dimension is not congruent to zero mod four, then the surgery obstruction of that product is zero. And we can actually extend this. Um, we can extend it so that theta uh, of the surgery obstruction of F to the K fold product is also zero. Uh, the only time that this is, uh, you think this might not hold is if the dimension is two mod four and K is odd. And uh, if you can do the computation and what actually happens here is that um, because you're in dimension two mod four, your Euler characteristic is even. Um, and so this will give you that that formula zeros out uh, if, if you do that calculation. Um, so, all right, now we can talk about the theorem for higher topological complexity. I should say that um, higher topological complexity real quick. So if we have X to the I and we map down to, we say X to the K. So in this case, we're just mapping alpha maps to, and then we'll do alpha of zero. And then we do, uh, we have K minus two stops in between. So K has to be at least two. And so I believe it's uh, alpha of, um, I believe it's one over K minus one, right? And then we just uh, keep going until alpha of one. If I'm if I'm off by one on that denominator, I apologize. Um, and so that's what that map looks like. Um, and so we're looking at the sectional category of that. So now, let me just get rid of that. So now, if we have again normal map degree one between closed smooth manifolds and N is, we're gonna say R minus one connected, R is at least two. Um, in other words, N is at least simply connected. And we assume the same inequality, except the, uh, the dimension of our base in this case is actually gonna be K times the dimension of N because, because we have K copies of N in there. And, um, and then on the right, it's the same as before. So two times R, times the TC, TC sub K of N minus three. 
Now, we also need to assume that the dimension of n is not congruent to zero mod four. Uh, we'll cover the zero mod four case in, in a bit. Uh, you don't get as nice of a theorem there. Um, and so then uh, the to higher topological complexity of M, the kth topological complexity, is at least as big as the kth topological complexity of N. When I say you don't get, uh, yeah. By the way, when I say you don't get as nice of a theorem, I haven't proved as nice of a theorem. Maybe somebody else can. Um, uh, so now the corollary to this, we'll just look at the k equals two and the r equals two case to kind of make things feel a little, um, you know, uh, more grounded, I should say. And so if we have that the dimension of n is less than or equal to two times the TC of n minus two, and the dimension is not congruent to zero mod four, then the TC of m is at least as big as the TC of n. Um, the five on the bottom goes away because um, when the dimension is two, uh, I believe it was a paper by Rudiak and Sarkar, um, his conjecture is solved in that case. And then if the dimension is three, two times the three is six, which is greater than or equal to five. So, and then on the one on the right-hand side, we sort of just divided by two and took the floor on the right-hand side. Um, so that gave us our new sort of inequality there. And um, let's take an even more special case here. Um, let's say that we take dimension n is equal to six. And so this translates to our condition being four is less than or equal to the TC of n. Um, right, and our dimension is um, even. So the smallest TC we can have is, is two in, in the even case. So the conjecture holds when the TC of n is as small as possible. So the only open problem for normal maps in dimension six would then be if the TC is three, uh, the TC of the codomain is three. Um, so this, this does cover quite a range of cases, right? Because the TC can be anywhere up to uh, 12 here, right? So most of it's covered here. I, you know, less and less will be covered as we get into higher and higher dimensions, but I uh, feel like this is a nice low dimensional example. And so what's the proof here? Um, well, I have this commutative diagram taking the path space vibrations. Um, and then I have F to the, uh, the k-fold product of F on the bottom and just composition with F on the top. My fibers are um, the K minus one fold product of the loop space of the codomain. And that is R minus two connected. And then we also have the theta of F that's trivial, like we talked about, since K is at least two and the dimension is not congruent to zero mod four. So all we have to do from here is apply the previous lemma for sectional category. Um, and we get the result on the, uh, the previous page. Okay, and so now we need to delve into a um, a bit more complicated of a case, and this is when the dimension is congruent to four mod, I mean zero mod four, or dimension is four k, I should say. Um, so in this case, uh, we still assume normal map of degree one, but now we have to assume both of our manifolds are r minus one connected, instead of just one of them. Um, and of course, R is at least two, so at least simply connected. And um, we assume that M satisfies this inequality right here. So we have the category of M plus two, and then we have this four N plus two over R. Um, this inequality right here will actually, will, in the proof, we will retrieve the inequality for N because we'll, we'll assume that the, by contradiction, that TC of N is bigger than TC of M. And so then we retrieve the previous inequality and apply the previous lemma when we get to that point. Um, this, uh, this inequality also stems from uh, needing to take um, connected sums. And so does this cat of m plus two. Um, okay, and then if we have this inequality, we can assume that, I mean, we can show that TC of m is at least as big as TC of m. And so, Again, let's take a simpler case. So R is equal to two. Um, in the case that R is equal to two, we have a normal map of one, simply connected manifolds. Um, if TC of M is at least two N plus two, then the TC of M is greater than or equal to the TC of N. And so what happens there is this category is less than or equal to, um, when it's simply connected, you're going a four N dimension. We know that it's less than or equal to four N, I mean, sorry, two N. So 2n, 
and then plus two because of that plus two there. And then that four n plus two right here is equal to two n plus one. And so um, I know that if I satisfy two, that it's bigger than two n plus two, it's gonna be bigger than that maximum. Um, so it's not quite a special case um, of the theorem, but it, it is implied by it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the results necessary here. Um, so this lemma right here, this first one, is um, it tells us that we can take connected sums when n is simply connected. And we can do so up to homotopy. So um, essentially we can take, uh, if we have a degree map between smooth closed n manifolds with our codomain simply connected, then my map F is homotopic to some map G such that there is a, a disk on which the, uh, that G is uh, diffeomorphic. And uh, moreover, if F was normal then G, then it stays normal in the, in the construction. Um, and this was, um, this was extracted from a different proof for something else in the, uh, in a, in the recent surgery book by Crowley, Luke, and um, Mako, uh, the unpublished one that's, that's online. And um, he, instead of the simply connected assumption, he had the assumption that F was a two equivalence. So basically we have an isomorphism on fundamental groups. Um, but in my case, since I had my codomain simply connected already, it was easier to, to use this, to show and use this lemma. Um, and then I have a lemma under that. Uh, and it basically says that if I have a degree one map between smooth closed four n manifolds and simply connected, then there's some two n minus one connected smooth closed manifold P and a normal map of degree one from P to the four n sphere that has the opposite surgery obstruction of F. And um, I, I proved this myself as constructing it from M and N, uh, but I, I, I couldn't find a reference to a closed plumbing theorem. If anybody knows of one, I, I'd love to hear about it. I just couldn't find one when I was, uh, when I was doing this research. Um, and yeah, this will allow us to take that connected sum with this manifold P right here that's highly connected and um, get rid of our surgery obstruction. And hopefully the P doesn't have too much of an impact is, is why we take it to be two N minus one connected. Um, and so we need two more theorems. We're taking a connected sum here. So we need to bound the connected sum from above. Thanks to Jernishnikov and um, Sadikov. Uh, if you have two manifolds that are both R minus one connected and that the TC of one of them is at least the dimension plus two over R, then you know that the connected sum is dominated by the wedge product. And um, then we need to figure out what the web product is. And this is a theorem by Zapata. Uh, I believe his initial paper was in 2017 on archive. Um, and the 2021 one is a uh, revised version. Um, so if you have MNN closed manifolds, I think he does normal housework or something like that. I don't remember the exact conditions. Uh, but uh, anyways, if the TC of M wedge N is actually equal to this, uh, this maximum right here. And, um, and uh, so we need the TC of M. If we, if we have N is equal to P right here, so say this is P and this is P, we need M to dominate. And so we need the TC of M to be bigger than or equal to the TC of N, and we need it to be bigger than this category. This category is gonna be less than or equal to the TC of M. And so the TC of P, I mean, the category of, oops, that should be a cat right there, my bad. So the cat of uh, M. Since P is two minus one connected, its category is going to be at most two. So I can have a plus two right here. And that's where that, um, if we go back two slides, that's where that category of M plus two comes from. And then Rudiak's conjecture is true when the, um, the TC of M is one. So we want the TC of M at least two, right? And um, if the TC of M is at least two, then the TC of, of, of N right here, um, well, this is, uh, so we have TC of uh, M is greater than or equal to the cat of M plus two, which is gonna be greater than or equal to four in this case. 
And the, the TC of P, since it's 2n minus 1 connected, is at most 4. So that's enough for it to dominate P as well. Um, and then the, so that's what this bound does. And then the other bound, the, this n over n plus 2 over r, that gives us this, uh, this first bound right here. And um, I think that that's, that's all. I have a list of references, if anybody cares. Thank you. I'm, I guess I'm a few minutes early. I apologize. Thank you, Jamie. Do we have any questions? Yes, I have a, a question. Mark, go. Yeah, that was very very nice talk. Very nice results. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I, I'd be interested in more examples to which um, to which this theorem applies, and in particular, how do you check whether something is a normal map? Is is there a cohomological criterion? Um, I am not. I mean, I'm going to say that I am not an expert in surgery. I have a working knowledge of surgery. Uh, Unfortunately, but I'll go back to the, the condition that, I mean, I guess the only slide I have on the norm, normality is the definition. And so, yeah, <clears throat> not that slide, but I have more slides than I thought I did. There we go. Uh, so I, I guess you just have to check if it's stably trivial. I, somebody that knows more about this uh, probably would be able to give you a better answer. Is, for example, the the map from a connected sum that collapses a factor, is that normal? Uh, I mean, I, could I you deduce? Hmm. What does that mean? Yes. Pardon? Really? Not necessary, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I, there, I know there are examples of non normal maps. Um, no, no, collapsing is not normal if, uh, say, uh, one of some and non spins uh, is example, say like CP uh, for. But I guess I was just wondering if the theorem tells you that TC of a connect sum is greater than or equal to. DC no, of no, unfortunately, factor. unfortunately not. Um, okay. But do we know that? that? Well, that the TC is that it's greater than. Equal. So we know if, if one of the manifolds is uh, is simply connected, we know that the, the the TC dominates the simply connected sum and. Um, that's that's a theorem in uh, I, I believe Jurishnikov's and Sadikov's one of their papers. Okay. Thank you. I guess I have a related question. I, is there any hope of removing that assumption about simple, simply connected in various places? Uh, I have a related question. Is there any hope of proving the formula for the connected sum for TC? <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I mean, I guess you could probably try to, I, I'm, I'm not well-versed enough in surgery, but there, there are other obstruction groups you might be able to look at maybe that also have trivial, some of the L groups are trivial. Um, but I, I honestly don't know enough about like taking specific L groups and doing stuff with that. It's not something I'm, I currently know enough to do. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop the recording. I, if there are more questions, please feel free to continue with them. <laughs>